Nightshade, a new tech that poisons AI, is finally here, and I'll show you how you can start using it today to protect your art. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to AI Roundup, a weekly digest of all things AI related. I'm your host, Phil Buck, and if you enjoy the show, help me out by hitting that like button and subscribe to the channel. On today's AI Roundup, we're following up on a story from October when the art world rejoiced at the announcement of a first-of-its-kind technology that allows you to process digital images so that if they are scraped by AI models for training, it will essentially poison that model and make it useless. To learn more about what Nightshade is, check out my previous video from October, but today we're going to focus on specifically how to use it. So first up, just visit the link in the show notes over at nightshade.cs.uchicago.com in order to download the software. Currently, it's only available for Macs using M1, M2, or M3 chips, and it's, of course, on any PC running Windows 10 or 11. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, PC versions can run the software on a GPU. Once you have the software installed and up and running, you experience a very straightforward UI that allows you to upload a picture or a batch of pictures. From there, you'll choose the intensity to run Nightshade. The lower the intensity, the less noticeable the changes will be to your images, and the higher, the more visible those changes will be. Then you'll choose your render quality from faster to slowest, which gives runtime estimates from 30 minutes up to 3 hours. And yes, that's for one single image. All that's left is to specify your output folder and then optionally you can tag the image yourself with a term that relates to what's in the image, but you don't have to do this as Nightshade indicates it will auto detect and suggest a word. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute. Okay, so in my test, I ran on one of my own memes with dimensions of, it was roughly about 2000 pixels by 2200 pixels and the settings on default intensity and faster render quality. The process started out estimating about 45 minutes to process this image. Uh, after about five minutes, that dropped down dramatically to around seven to eight minutes where it kind of stayed for a long time. It fluctuated a bit until I would say when it was done, I think it had spent about 15 minutes to render my shaded image. And here are the results in a side-by-side -side comparison. As for this image, the auto-detected term was wool. So I guess it really keyed into this Baja Blastodon's fur. <laughs> And looking at the two together, I can notice some very faint, like crinkle like textures that are visible over the darker or the more colorful parts of the image. Uh, for me, this doesn't cause such a noticeable change in the image that I would have a problem posting the, the shaded version. Uh, I'd be curious to hear what artists in the audience experience has been and if it made a detrimental effect on the way your art is presented. Honestly, with the pervasiveness of unavoidable compression on so many sites today, I, I would say this shading doesn't look any worse than what I've come to expect from pages like Facebook or LinkedIn. Okay, so the biggest takeaways for me are one, you need to have a pretty beefy computer if you want to run this locally. Uh, I don't think I would be surprised at all to see this application running on a remote server so that people can just access it and run it via a, a website and avoid the need to download the software at all. But for now, that's not an option. Uh, on top of that, it's definitely worth noting that the time investment you'll need to add to your workflow if you really want to safeguard yourself before posting anything on the internet. I mean, if you've got a grip of 10 images you're ready to share, you probably need to factor in a couple of hours to, to shade them. Some other noteworthy aspects of Nightshade include recommendation from the developers that you should both glaze, and that's a different technology that makes your art difficult to train on, but not poisonous. You need to do that as well as shade them for maximum protection. But these are two separate processes that need to be applied independently, so you need to factor in some more time for that. Uh, and they recommend do not do any other alterations to the image, such as resizing, adding watermarks, or saving in a different format after you shade the image uh, to get the best effect. So be sure to do any of that kind of stuff first and then run it through Nightshade. Uh, and finally, they also recommend not to note that your images are shaded anywhere you post them online. That's just for the obvious fact that if you're calling out that your images are shaded, then you're kind of putting a target on your back. So keep that in mind. So personally, I found this software to be a bit cumbersome, I mean, to really be practical, at least in its current form. Not to mention, to really benefit from Nightshade, you'd either need to have never posted any of your art online ever before, or you're going to need to go and delete it all and repost it after shading it. Which I suppose that's a viable option, it's just not very convenient. 
That being said, I think this is a great first step in stopping AI from being able to train on your art. And if things keep rolling in this direction, I mean, eventually we might have something as easy as a, a Photoshop plugin that, you know, that just allows you to glaze or shade your image uh, upon your export. So, hey, that's not a bad idea. Somebody should probably get in on that. <laughs> All right, that's it for today's AI Roundup. Have you tried glaze or nightshade on your work? Let us know your experience by dropping a comment below or join us in the MMN Discord. And if you're enjoying the show, please hit that like button and sub to the channel. All right, signing off for this January 29th episode, I'm Phil Buck, and I'll see you next time. This has been a broadcast of the MSP Media Network.